Good afternoon, and thank you for standing by. Welcome to Western Digital's second quarter fiscal 2024 analyst call. Presently, all participants are in listen-only mode. We will open the lines up for questions shortly. If you would like to ask a question, you may press star then one on your touchtone phone. Now, I will turn the call over to Mr. Peter Andrew, VP of FPNA and IR. You may begin. Well, thank you and good afternoon, everyone. Joining me today are David Geckler, Chief Executive Officer, and we, Sam Jabre, Chief Financial Officer. Before we begin, let me remind everyone that today's discussion contains forward-looking statements based on management's current assumptions and expectations, and as such, does include risks and uncertainties. These forward-looking statements include expectations for our product portfolio, business plans and performance, market trends and dynamics, and financial results. We assume no obligation to update these statements. Please refer to our most recent financial report on Form 10-K and our other filings with the SEC for more information on the risks and uncertainties that could cause actual results to differ materially from expectations. We will also make references to non-GAAP financial measures today. Reconciliations between the non-GAAP and comparable GAAP financial measures are included in the press release and other materials that are being posted in the Investor Relations section of our website. With that, I will now turn the call over to David for introductory remarks. Thank you, Peter. Good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for joining the call to discuss our second quarter of fiscal year 2024 results. Western Digital second quarter results demonstrate that the structural changes we have put in place over the last few years and the strategy we have been executing are producing significant outperformance across our Flash and HDD businesses. I am confident that building leading products across a broad range of end markets, closely controlling our product cost through focused R&D and manufacturing, and bolstering the agility of our business will allow us to improve through cycle profitability and dampen business cycles. As a result, we reported revenue of $3 billion, non-GAAP gross margin of 15.5%, and a non-GAAP loss per share of $0.69. Cents all of which met or exceeded the non-GAAP guidance ranges we provided in October. Before discussing the business details, I want to provide some comments on the emerging trends we are seeing and how the changes we have made position our Flash and HD businesses to benefit. In Flash, we have been able to navigate business cycles by managing inventory proactively, offering a broad range of products, and optimizing capital efficiency through our joint venture partnership with Kyoksha. These successful efforts are reflected in our best-in-class gross margin throughout the cycle. During the quarter, our portfolio strategy to dynamically allocate bit shipments drove upside in ASPs and gross margin. Looking ahead, we will continue to take a disciplined approach to our supply and capital investments. Consequently, we continue to proactively manage our bit shipments to structurally align our supply and inventory with customer demand and improve through cycle profitability into the future. In addition to the recovery in both flash and HDD markets, we believe storage is entering a multi-year growth period. Generative AI has quickly emerged as yet another growth driver and transformative technology that is reshaping all industries, all companies, and our daily lives. Importantly, industry analysts estimate that the edge now rep represents approximately 80% of total NAND bit shipments, an increase from approximately 75% in calendar year 2022, which is another indication that cloud demand was significantly pulled in during the pandemic. In addition, we believe the second wave of generative AI-driven storage deployments will spark a client and consumer device refresh cycle and re-accelerate content growth in PC, smartphone, gaming, and consumer in the coming years. Our Flash portfolio is extremely well positioned to benefit from this emerging secular tailwind. In HDD, 
Western Digital's leading EPMR platform and enhanced ultra-SMR technology allow us to provide the highest capacity drives for mass market deployment. We believe this innovative technology and portfolio strategy enable us to offer the best TCO to our cloud customers and outperform our peers throughout the cycle. We are confident that the multi-quarter nearline demand headwinds have subsided as our major cloud customers have re-engaged with us. We anticipate our financial outperformance resulting from profitable share gains to become more evident as nearline demand accelerates into the second half of fiscal year 2024 and beyond. Moving on to end market commentary. During the quarter, revenue in the cloud end market returned to sequential growth for the first time in six quarters. The sequential revenue growth was led by an increase in nearline shipments. In client, sequentially, revenue declined slightly as the increase in flash ASPs was offset by a decline in bit shipments as we proactively optimized product mix. In consumer, the sequential revenue growth was led by seasonal strength in flash bit shipments into retail and an increase in flash ASPs. I'll now turn to business updates starting with Flash. During the quarter, the sequential revenue revenue increase was due to stronger execution in driving price inflection by optimizing bit shipment across our broad go-to-market channels into the consumer and client end markets, resulting in stronger than planned ASP increase. In particular, our WD Black Gaming SSD product, which offers high reliability, best-in-class performance expansive storage capabilities and a hyper-realistic gaming experience achieved a new record revenue with bit shipment growth of over 50% year over year. On the technology front, we remain on track to ramp an array of QLC-based client SSDs utilizing BIC-6 technology. Our ability to combine this new high-performance node with our in-house controller development allows us to offer a portfolio of client SSDs with unmatched performance and value. We expect these products to lead the transition to QLC flash in calendar year 2024. Additionally, BIX-8 yield is progressing well and we remain on track to productize this technology. Turning to HDD, The sequential revenue increase was driven by improving nearline demand and pricing. Moreover, we are encouraged by demand in China with revenue doubling on a sequential and year-over-year basis, both of which were ahead of our expectations. We anticipate year-over-year growth in HDD throughout this calendar year. In both the first and second quarters, we shipped approximately 1 million Ultra SMR drives per quarter. We forecast ultra-SMR hard drive shipments to increase significantly in the fiscal third quarter and SMR drive shipments to continue to outgrow that of CMR drives going forward. Importantly, the adoption of ultra-SMR is broadening to our major customers worldwide, including a third cloud titan in the U.S. this year, as well as hyperscale and smart video customers in China we expect to complete the qualifications of our 26 terabyte and 28 terabyte ultra SMR drives at these customers this quarter and throughout the calendar year and forecast SMR to comprise the majority of nearline demand by calendar year 2025. We have strong conviction that our portfolio strategy of first commercializing Western Digital's industry leading ultra SMR technology which will be followed by our transition from EPMR to Hammer, offers the best TCO to our customers in both the near and long term while delivering leading portfolio profitability in the industry. Over the next several years, we will be introducing a number of exciting products, including multiple generations of nearline drives combining EPMR, OptiNAN, and UltraSMR technologies in the 30 to upper 30 terabyte capacity range, all of which will be ready for high volume production to support the explosion of AI training data and content. Before I turn over to Wissam, I wanted to share some perspectives on our outlook. In Flash, starting with demand in calendar year 2024, 
we estimate industry bid growth to be around the mid-teens percentage, similar to the growth rate in calendar year 2023. On the supply side, we estimate that fab out bid production growth to remain in the mid-single digit percentage range. We believe our business agility and our highly capital efficient and low cost BIX architecture have enabled us to align supply with demand via nodal transition much more quickly than our peers. We will continue our disciplined approach to dynamically managing our inventory, capacities, and capital expenditures to keep our supply aligned with end customer demand. Although flash pricing has started to increase, our profitability and cash generation continue to be well below the level that justify an increase in capital investments. We anticipate wafer equipment spending will remain at historic lows in the near term and flash to be undersupplied for an extended period of time. Overall, we will continue to focus on allocating our bids to the most attractive end markets and anticipate flash ASP increases to be the primary revenue growth driver throughout this calendar year. In HDD, our competitive portfolio strategy has enabled us to consistently achieve profitable share gain in the last two calendar years. We are confident that this trend will continue as near-line demand continues to improve and we continue to ramp our ultra-SMR-enabled ultra products. Let me now turn the call over to Wiesam, who will discuss our financial second quarter results. Thank you and good afternoon, everyone. Following on David's comments, the success of the strategy we have been executing is reflected in our financial performance. Non-GAAP results in the fiscal second quarter exceeded or were at the high end of the guidance ranges we provided in October. Total revenue for the quarter was $3 billion, up 10% sequentially and down 2% year over year. Non-GAAP loss per share was $0.69 cents, as strong execution with our broad go-to-market channels benefited flash ASP and gross margin. Looking at end markets, Cloud represented 35% of total revenue at $1.1 billion, up 23% sequentially, and down 13% year-over-year. Sequentially, the growth is attributed to higher near-line shipments to data center customers and better near-line pricing. Near-line bit shipments were 67 exabytes, up 23%. The year-over-year decrease was due to lower ESSD bit shipments. On a year-over-year basis, HDD cloud revenue increased for the first time in six quarters. Client represented 37% of total revenue at $1.1 billion, down 2% sequentially, and up 3% year-over-year. Sequentially, an increase in flash ASP was more than offset by a decline in flash bit shipments. The year-over-year increase was due to higher flash shipments primarily driven by client SSD shipments into PC applications, more than offsetting a decline in ASP. Consumer represented 28% of total revenue at $0.8 billion, up 15% sequentially and 6% year over year. Sequentially, the growth was primarily due to seasonal strength in flash bit shipments. On a year-over-year basis, the increase in flash bit shipments was partially offset by a decline in flash ASP as well as lower HDD shipments. Turning now to revenue by business segment. In the fiscal second quarter, flash revenue was $1.7 billion, growing 7% sequentially as flash ASPs increased 10% on a blended basis and 7% on a like-for-like -like basis stronger than anticipated entering the quarter. Bit shipments decreased 2% after record shipments in the prior quarter. On a year-over-year -year basis, flash revenue grew slightly with a 21% increase in bit shipments, offsetting lower prices. HDD revenue was $1.4 billion, increasing 14% sequentially, as total exabyte shipments increased 14%, and average price per unit increased 9% to $122. On a year-over-year -year basis, HDD revenue declined 6%, while total exabyte shipments increased 2% and 
an average price per unit increased 23%. Moving to gross margin and expenses, please note my comments will be related to non-GAAP results unless stated otherwise. Gross margin was 15.5%, above the guidance range provided in October, and improving 11.4 percentage points sequentially, while declining 1.9 percentage points year over year. The sequential increase was primarily driven by higher flash ASPs as we proactively optimized product mix, which more than offset higher than anticipated underutilization charges of 156 million or a 5.1 percentage points headwind. Flash gross margin was higher than expected at 7.9 percent, up 18.2 percentage points sequentially, and down 6.6 percentage points year over year. This includes underutilization charges of 107 million or a 6.4 percentage points headwind to gross margin. HDD gross margin was 24.8 percent, up 1.9 percentage points sequentially and 4.1 percentage points year over year. This includes underutilization charges of 49 million or a 3.6 percentage point headwind. We continue to tightly manage operating expenses, which were 561 million for the quarter, down 15% year over year, and at the lower end of the guidance range. Operating loss in the quarter was 91 million, which included underutilization charges of 156 million. Fiscal second quarter loss per share was 69 cents, inclusive of a $14 million dividend associated with the convertible preferred shares. Operating cash flow for the second quarter was an outflow of 92 million and free cash flow was an outflow of 176 million. Cash capital expenditures, which include the purchase of property, plant and equipment and activity related to our flash joint ventures on the cash flow statement represented a cash outflow of 84 million. The quarter ending inventory was 3.2 billion, declining 281 million from the prior quarter. Days of inventory decreased five days to 115 days. The majority of the decline was in flash, where flash days of inventory remained at a four year low. During the quarter, we issued $1.6 billion in convertible notes, repurchased 508 million of the outstanding 2024 convertible notes, and paid down 300 million of the delayed draw term loan. Gross debt outstanding was 8.5 billion at the end of the fiscal second quarter. We expect to retire the remaining balance of approximately 600 million of the 2024 convertible notes at maturity in February 2024. At the end of the fiscal second quarter, cash and cash equivalents were 2.5 billion and total liquidity was 4.7 billion, including the undrawn revolver capacity of 2.25 billion. For the fiscal third quarter, our non-GAAP guidance is as follows. We expect revenue to be in the range of 3.2 to 3.4 billion, we expect sequential revenue growth to be mainly driven by an increase in HDD. We anticipate flash revenue to be up slightly as we remain focused on optimizing bit shipments and ASP. We expect gross margin to be between 22% and 24%, which includes HDD underutilization charges of 30 to 40 million. We expect operating expenses to be between 600 and 620 million, with the increase driven by the reinstatement of certain incentive compensation programs as the financial outlook has strengthened. Interest and other expenses are expected to be approximately 95 million. We continue to expect income tax expenses to be between 20 and 30 million for fiscal third quarter and 80 to 120 million for fiscal year 2024. We expect a preferred dividend of 15 million. We expect earnings per share to be 5 cents plus or minus 15 cents based on approximately 330 million shares outstanding. As the financial outlook has improved, 
we will remain disciplined in executing the business, proactively managing our supply and inventory to meet customer end demand and controlling capital spending, all with the goal of improving profitability. I'll now turn the call back over to David. Thanks, Rissam. Let me wrap up and then we'll open up for questions. I want to emphasize that the steps the Western Digital team has taken to instill and deploy an industry-leading product portfolio, while also moving quickly to adapt to both volatile market dynamics and anticipate future trends, have enabled us to capitalize on the upswing we see ahead. Through our product leadership and ability to dampen business cycles and improve through-cycle profitability, I am confident we are well positioned to execute on our current strategy, which will reaffirm our strength over the long term. Let's now begin the Q&A. Ladies and gentlemen, as a reminder, if you have a question, please press star on your phone. If you would like to withdraw your question, please press star then two. One moment, please, for the first question. Our first question comes from Joe Moore with Morgan Stanley. Your line is now open. Great, thank you. Um, I wonder if you could talk about the gross margin improvement in Q1. Uh, I guess how would, how do you apportion that between the drive business and the, the NAND business? And I guess I'm, you know, I would think with being judicious on volume, you'd get some pretty good NAND pricing. I guess I might have expected a little bit more gross margin improvement. So just curious, uh, you know, what I'm missing there. Thanks. Yeah, Joe. So um, we've been, you know, it's good to see the pricing inflect. Um, if you look into Q1, you know, we were happy with the gross margin we delivered in the flash business in the December quarter at 7.9. Um, I think we were able to capture the, the turn in the market well. Uh, so that gives us a little higher base going into the uh, March quarter. But if you look at the bulk businesses, uh, you see Flash will be down on bits and up on price. So we see we still see st- strong price increases quarter to quarter, but we're down on volume. Uh, let's call it low double digits. And then in the HED business, we see increase in volume and increase in price. Thank you. Thanks. Our next question comes from Aaron Rakers with Wells Fargo. Your line is now open. Yeah, thanks for uh, taking the question. Um, j- just kind of building off that last question, I know you talked about hard disk drive underutilization uh, expectation in this current quarter, kind of embedded in that 22 to 24% guide. W- what's the underutilization assumption you're making on the flash business? And, and just in general, you know, how, how do you think about the trajectory of flash, you know, gross margin? Let, let's say, in theory, if pricing and your, your implementation of price increases continues, how do we think about the, the return to kind of a 30% plus gross margin in flash? So uh, just trying to think about the puts and takes and the guidance and then the, the longer term kind of view back to what you characterize as normalized gross margin. Hey, thanks, Aaron. Uh, so uh, for Flash, in our guide, uh, we don't have uh, underutilization uh, for Q3. Uh, in fact, we executed ahead of schedule uh, and reached our targeted supply and inventory goals faster than, when, uh, than what we anticipated. And so, uh, as you know, we continue uh, to dynamically manage supply and uh, inventory to meet our end demand. And so the FAB utilization reflects that. Uh, if you recall, um, in our results in Q1, uh, flash inventory was down almost $400 million. Last quarter, we saw another uh, over $200 million uh, decline in inventory. Uh, we're, we're, we exited the quarter at levels uh, we haven't seen in a few years. Um, so uh, having said that, obviously, we will continue to uh, be disciplined in how we manage our supply and inventory to meet uh, end customer demand on flash and also, of course, control our uh, capital uh, spend. Uh, with respect to uh, your question uh, at the 30%, uh, uh, w- uh, let me clarify, was your question 30% on the flash or on the HDD side? Well, I, I guess I'm going to 
<laughs> I'm going to say both, but it was, it was <laughs> yeah. Flash. Uh, open the door but, wide but, open. But, yeah, it, yeah. It, well, exactly. I, <laughs> I, yeah, I thought I heard you say Flash. I was going to start talking about it. Well, let me start talking about uh, uh, HDD. Look, uh, at HDD, we're pretty much uh, uh, very close to that level. You know, when you look at what we delivered in the second quarter, and uh, when you also look at uh, the guide, it does reflect uh, continuous uh, margin improvement on the HDD side. And so I also anticipate that uh, there should be continuous improvement as uh, the recovery uh, continues in that business. So uh, 30% is very much within reach, uh, and uh, we should be able to achieve it uh, uh, pretty soon. Um, on the flash side, uh, the uh, the uh, a lot a lot has to do with uh, uh, continuing to uh, uh, optimize the product mix to drive that uh, ASP up, uh, and also of course continuing to deliver on our uh, cost reduction. Uh, and so, uh, on the cost reduction, uh, we've done well so far. We've been in the mid-teens. Uh, I expect us to also uh, hit that uh, mid-teens percentage. Uh, cost reduction for uh, this fiscal year. So as uh, ad, as the uh, pricing continues to improve, uh, I would anticipate that we would be uh, we would also be uh, there uh, in the let, let's say in the next uh, few quarters. Thank you. Our next question comes from C J Muse with Cantor Fitzgerald. Your line is now opened. Yeah, good afternoon, guys. Thanks for uh, taking the question. I, I guess was hoping to, uh, you know, focus uh, on, on the NAND bit side of the house. Um, you're talking about optimizing product mix, uh, but here we have bits down uh, in December. It looks like they're down, uh, implied down again in, in, in the March quarter. So can, can you speak to, I guess, your, your plans there? When do you think that, that will open up? And uh, can you be a little more specific in terms of which end market you're focused on and, and how we should think about um, when they come to market and the timing and, and implications to pricing? Yeah, so I'll, I'll start, and uh, we some can add some, too. So, yeah, we we had bits down. We had a record quarter uh, last quarter, two quarters ago, and then we were down a little bit this past quarter, and then we'll be down more. I mean, it's just a reflection of the flow through the underutilization that we were doing to kind of keep supply and demand matched. We've talked about this a lot. Uh, and not let our inventory get out of control. I think we've been very good about keeping our inventory. Um, uh, you know, we're, we're at a four-year low on inventory, so uh, on the NAND side. So, look, CJ, we're just going to keep very focused on what demand is, uh, where we're at in inventory, and you know, adjust the utilization of the fab to make sure those stay aligned as we go forward. So I think as we said in the script, we you kind of assume that throughout this calendar year, you're going to see most of the growth in Flash be from pricing. Thank as you. far yeah, as quick, quick. Oh. go ahead, Sorry, please. I was going to move on to the second part of your question. Yeah, please go ahead. Okay, so mix is like... Mix is just a very dynamic uh, process, uh, like literally day by day, week by week in the business. You know, we have a big consumer franchise. We sell all over the world. We have hundreds of thousands of points of presence and e-tail platforms. Uh, we have a big channel business where pricing can get adjusted weekly, uh, you know, and then all the way up to obviously the, the quarterly negotiated market. So, we're just always dynamically understanding where pricing is going to be. And then, again, in each of those segments, we have different products. Uh, you know, we have client SSDs that are, you know, WD Black all the way down to WD Green. So in different segments of the market, all with different price points, all with different margins, all with different demand profiles. And it's a constant process of just making sure we put the supply where we're going to get the best return. Um, this last quarter we talked about we mixed a little bit out of client and into consumer, as you would expect in a strong consumer quarter, uh, and we'll continue to we'll continue to do that. The place where we're we're still waiting for it to come back is enterprise SSD. Uh, that's still been pretty pretty depressed, and as that market starts to come back, we expect to to mix into that as well. Very helpful. If I could ask just a quick follow up with some, can you can you shed um, some light on how to think about opex in, into June uh, quarter and beyond? 
Thank you. Yes, of, uh, of course, CJ. So on the OPEX side, I, you know, for the June quarter, I expect us to be uh, more or less uh, in line. Beyond that, uh, you know, as the business uh, profitability uh, continues to improve, uh, I expect a gradual increase. Uh, but we're, uh, we're laser focused on profitability, and so I don't anticipate to uh, increase our OPEX uh, uh, faster than revenue growth, uh, of course. And when you... Uh, Look at uh, look at uh, where we've come from uh, and where we are today. We're still uh, we're still uh, uh, at or maybe more than 20 percent lower than where we were at the beginning of the cyclical downturn. Thank you. Thanks, CJ. Our next question comes from Carl Ackerman with BNP Paribas. Please go ahead. Yes, thank you, gentlemen. I have two, if I may. Uh, the first, why do you think there was a doubling of China demand for VIA applications this quarter, and how sustainable do you think that is? I ask because the Chinese economy hasn't been robust for some time, so any thoughts on that would be helpful. Yeah, I wouldn't attribute it to the the smart video market. It's more of the China hyperscalers uh, coming back and, 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 and better demand there. Got it. Okay, thank you for that. Um, I guess it, it, to switch to the uh, man flashes, if I may, um, you know, it's nice to see an improving outlook for March, uh, certainly one quarter ahead of uh, many of our expectations. However, I'm a bit surprised to see your NAND ASP trajectory in December uh, below that appears. So is there any reason why your NAND prices or ASPs perhaps would fall behind peers uh, from here? And or maybe there would be a catch-up opportunity as well. Thank you. Yeah, price your price deltas obviously have a big dependency on your starting point, and we were starting from a better gross margin position than anybody else in the industry by quite a bit. So, and then on top of that, you have mix based on what's happening in the quarter and kind of uh, where the where the product's going. I think if you look at profitability of the franchise, it's still in the, it's still leading the the uh, the industry. Thank you. Thank you, Carl. Our next question comes from Tim O'Malley with Barclays. Your line is now opened. Hey, guys. Thanks for taking my question. It's Tom O'Malley here at Barclays. I, um, <laughs> I wanted to ask you. <laughs> so it was your evil twin uh, or something. So. I know. Who's that guy? <laughs> um, so uh, I wanted to ask in the competitive uh, environment. Uh, your competitor obviously talked about uh, a million unit shipments of hammer in the first half of the calendar year here. I just wanted to get your comments on, are you seeing any change um, in your interactions with your customers? Uh, are they pointing to hammer as a solution that they're going to move to early in the year? Can you just talk to uh, just the broader ecosystem and if you're seeing a transition there or if, if, if it's the other side, really, clearly you're seeing some, um, you know, some better trends with your ultra SMR drives. Just, just any color on that transition with, uh, with your customers would be helpful. I think customers just want to understand everybody's roadmap, right? And they're not looking for a particular solution. I mean, for example, we've been shipping EPMR drives for years versus PMR drives, and nobody really asks us for EPMR drives. So they just want the capacity point at a TCO um, at a reliability level and be able to satisfy their demand. And I think that's the way we've optimized our portfolio. Uh, we've commercialized EPMR. We're very happy with the technology. Uh, we have Ultra SMR on top of that. That allows us to deliver both the highest capacity points in the industry, the best TCO position at very, very large scale. Right? We can produce millions and millions of those drives per quarter. So that's what customers are looking for, and they're looking to understand on your roadmap that you can continue to drive that TCO equation forward because they're obviously betting extremely large data centers on our ability to do that. And our customers, I can tell you our customers have an enormous amount of confidence in our roadmap in our current products, and you're seeing that in the performance of the business. You're seeing accelerating growth. You're seeing better profitability. You're seeing share gains. That's, that's a clear indication that customers are very happy with our products. Now, in particular, on the transition of EPMR to Hammer, I know this has gotten a lot of attention 
um, for, for our portfolio, given our ultra SMR technology, it's been adopted by the market. Hammer does not make sense until you get to four terabytes per platter. And because Hammer adds a lot of cost to the product. So it adds a lot of cost to your bill of material. So we can deliver, you know, we, we see the next couple generations or couple years of ability to deliver a very strong TCO proposition at scale on the EPMR plus Ultra SMR platform that customers have clearly adopted. We see it as the majority of our demand in calendar year 25. That tech, we will transition to Hammer when we get to that four terabytes per platter. That's the economic crossover, right, that we're looking for uh, from a portfolio management point of view. So that gives you a, a little more color on how we're thinking about the technology, the transition, and how, how customers are thinking about it. I think it, uh, it's very clear customers are are very happy with our roadmap and they understand in great detail where we're going. Perfect. And then just one quick one on HDD gross margins. I think um, when you look at the underutilization charges that are still present, you can look at just taking that out and what that means for the gross margins over the next couple of quarters. But is there any way to frame like a revenue level that gets you back to that 30% gross margin target for the HDD business? Um, or is it kind of just a wait and see when utilization picks back up and it will get there eventually. Any just way to frame that um, from a modeling perspective as to when that can get back to your range. Thank you. So, uh, Tom, if you look at our numbers, uh, you know, uh, and you adjust for the underutilization uh, charges, uh, we're almost there. So, uh, uh, you know, the, what, what I would say, instead of giving a, a number or, or a, uh, movement, let's say, in, in uh, quantifying it. What I would say is, I expect us to be at the 30% level at a, at a lower level than uh, than our normal run rate uh, that we've had in any uh, prior through cycle periods. We've uh, taken quite a bit of uh, cost out of our cost structure, as you very well know, and so that will help us uh, get there uh, at a faster pace. Uh, with respect to underutilization, uh, you know, uh, you know I, I do anticipate to probably have a bit more uh, another quarter of uh, underutilization uh, beyond this one, and then we'll see where we are in, uh, in the June quarter, and you know, we can talk about it then. Thank you very much. Thanks, Tom. You're welcome. The next question comes from Krish Sankar with TD Cowan. Your line is now open. Two of them, too. The first one on NAND, um, either Dave or Vissam, uh, how do you think of the sustainability of NAND pricing into the back half, given that there's a view that first half pricing could be up and a calendar year base, calendar first half, we have over 50%. How do you think about the sustainability and what would be the trigger point for you to start adding capacity in NAND. And then just as a follow-up on the hard drive side, um, you know, you kind of mentioned Hammer adds cost, which kind of makes a lot of sense given the laser and NFT. Kind of curious, um, would you, if you, whenever you, you start doing it, would you do it with 10 disks? And uh, if the market wants a Hammer solution from WD, uh, how soon can you get it? Okay, there's a lot, there's a lot in there. So on, on NAND, um, look, what, what we... We obviously look at a lot of things in NAN. There's a lot of stuff that goes into supply of NAN from uh, utilization rates to nodal transitions to CapEx investment. And, uh, you know, it's a complicated equation. But um, our current view is we see NAN undersupplied for quite some time in the market. And that's appropriate given where we are in the uh, in the profitability of the business, as I said in the prepared remarks, it's look we're happy to see the inflection in pricing and the performance of the business, and it's ahead of where we thought it was going to be. But we've got a long way to go before we're going to get to the profitability levels where we're going to uh, where investment's going to come back. And you know, I think the answer to your question, we we need very clear visibility into through cycle profitability numbers that that match our model. And, uh, you know, we're coming out of a deep hole, and that would imply that you need to be above your through cycle level for a while to uh, get, get to that level over time. So that's what we're looking at, and we expect pricing to, you know, pricing is notoriously difficult to, uh, to predict, and we're very careful that we don't forecast it, but 
um, you know, clearly we're predicting good pricing increases into the next quarter, uh, and and we will stay very disciplined of managing supply and demand uh, in our business. We we talked about that bits are down uh, sequentially. Uh, on HDD, I'm sorry, could you just repeat the HDD question again so that I make sure I got it? Yeah, sure, uh, Dave. I was just trying to figure out on the HDD side, uh, A number one is Hannah, would you be doing it with 30, 10 disks? Uh, second one is if the market wants a, you know, a solution from Western Digital, a Hammer solution, how soon can you get it out? Yeah, so let me, we'll, we'll defer the details of product launch on, on Hammer and how many disks it's going to have uh, until we get closer to that process. I mean, it's a project that's, we're happy with where the progress of it is, given what I said earlier. We've got a, we've built a technology roadmap that allows us to get to 40 terabytes on very well proven, cost controlled, high you know high manufacturing ability technology, and we're looking forward to delivering that to the market over the next couple of years. The reality is there's no customer like demands a particular technology. The customer wants a capacity point at a certain TCO at a certain level of reliability and a certain level of performance. And our technology roadmap is built to deliver that. What's inside the box is is less important. Uh, the, the real thing is you have to deliver all of those that we just said, and you have to be able to manufacture it at a level of millions and millions of units uh, per quarter to, uh, to satisfy the market. That's what our customers are looking for. Our EPMR and ultra-SMR technology, that's exactly what it delivers, the ability to, to deliver increasing TCO, which, you know, if we can deliver increasing TCO, we can continue to drive pricing higher. Uh, we can produce it at very high scale, can be qualified very, very quickly, and it's very highly reliable and high-quality product. And our customers are increasingly uh, adopting that technology, as you see you know, uh, by, from our forecast. Thanks, David. Very helpful. Thanks. The next question comes from Wamzi Mohan with Bank of America. Please go ahead. Ah uh, yes, thank you so much. Uh, Dave, appreciate the answer you just gave around around pricing. But if I could ask this a slightly different way, how, how would you think about pricing the runway that you have in Flash relative to past cycles? I mean, given that your commentary on how you managed your inventory, given your comments on expectation to be undersupplied for a long time, would you venture to say that? the pricing runway that you have should be longer than what you've had in past cycles. On NAND? Yeah. I'm sorry. You know, look, I mean, I think it's the, the cycle we just, I guess we're not out of it. We're, we're coming out of it. Like I said, like we're just taking the first steps out of a, a cycle we haven't seen before, I think, in the 3D era. So, um you know, what, what we're doing, Wamsi, is just making sure we get our supply and demand matched and make sure we keep our inventory control and deliver the best profitability given the portfolio we have and continue to optimize the portfolio that we can have the best mix and therefore the best profitability. It's very difficult to, to predict future pricing, and um, but our, our general point is that although things are going in the right direction, we're not we're, – we're not, close to a point where the CapEx investment is going to come back. And I think that's the real number on what future supply is going to be. I mean, clearly there's some utilization that is going to come back, but it's going to be needed, quite frankly. And, um, you know, uh, we're going to wait to see on, uh, as I said, through cycle profitability where we have visibility to that, uh, to we invest more in this business. Okay, thanks, Dave. If I could, um, you, you mentioned uh, about you know, entering a multi-year growth period with, with generative AI, um, and especially at the edge, uh, the demand for NAND bits. Well, when do you think that the industry will start to see this demand for NAND bits at the edge start to inflect higher? Yeah, I th look, I think we're going to see it as we start to go into PC refresh cycles. So, admittedly, we still, we're still very early in this, right, G 
getting the cloud. I mean, the, the, the big part right now is getting the cloud capable of delivering Gen AI to all of us uh, and then drive that architecture down to the edge. I think we're starting to see uh, in some of the markets, some of the future specs of products where they're increasing the amount of NAND. So we're optimistic about that. Uh, you know, as we go through the next couple of years and this architecture gets deployed and adopted. So I, I can't, like, put it down to a particular quarter for you, but uh, certainly as new technology uh, launches or new technology adoption, it's moving at a faster pace than, than uh, any technology I've seen in a very long time. Thanks, Wamsi. The next question comes from Mehdi Hossini with SIG. Your line is now opened. Yes, uh, thanks for taking my question. Just want to take a clarification. Uh, David, did you say that man bit demand is tracking to mid teens and that compares to bit supply growth of 5%? Yeah, we, we see demand around mid teens, uh, and that's fab out. What we see is kind of fab production of mid single digits, and obviously there's inventory between those. Okay. Now, what what got me confused is you also said your NAND inventory is a multi-year low. Did I misunderstand you? You did not misunderstand me. Okay. So, if your inventory is a multi-year low and demand well exceeding supply, so you basically are not going to ship to supply, or, or you're not going to ship to demand throughout the year. But price and then price increase would remain. We're going to, yeah, we'll, we'll ship to our share demand throughout the year. Okay. Now, would that impact your market share, or you, you're focusing on select more profitable okay. and market? No, we don't anticipate that to impact our market share. Uh, Mehdi, these, this, the, the, uh, the stats that uh, you mentioned on the uh, supply and uh, production uh, were for our estimates and what we see from uh, third-party estimates on the overall, uh, overall market. Oh, okay. The overall market, not reflection. Yep. Not exactly. Okay. I'm sorry. That's... Go ahead, Mehdi. I'm sorry. Sorry. No, no, please, go ahead. Yeah, um, so these are um, um, market trends, not so specific to Western Dish. And then if I may just have a quick follow-up, in terms of the uh, NAND cost down, should we assume that long-term trend of, what, down 10% in terms of CAGR? No, we're 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 comfortable with the 15% cost downs. We we believe that if you look, you, I mean we're 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 ahead of that right now in in FY24, quite frankly. But it'll it'll come back, and I think when you look at the full year, you can still model 15% for the for the fiscal year. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question comes from Stephen Fox with Fox Advisors. Please go ahead. Hi, good afternoon. Um, I was just wondering on enterprise SSDs, you mentioned that they're still de depressed and you'll mix into it. But um, given the supply situation that you just talked about and where we are in the cycle, like what is your, what, how do you envision coming back in that market? And like, can you just remind us what a normal mix of enterprise SSDs looks like in your, in your flash business? Thanks. Well, I mean, for us, it was, uh, it's an emerging, um, it's an emerging part of the portfolio. I think right going right into the downturn, we got qualified at numerous or, or a number of cloud titans in our NVMe-based enterprise SSD, and then we kind of went into a, a market where, uh, quite frankly, enterprise SSD has been the most depressed part of the NAND market in the downturn, and we haven't seen that come back yet. So uh, as that starts to come back out of digestion, uh, it'll just be another opportunity for us to mix into that. How much we mix into it will be depending on what the price is on that in that segment uh, versus other options we have for for those uh, those bits. So we don't necessarily, yeah, you know, we don't necessarily have a fixed percentage we're going for. It's just we have the product. It's qualified. As demand comes back, we'll consider that demand and part of the whole portfolio calculus. Would the, would the big picture be that it 
trails, enterprise HDDs by a certain amount of time in general? Like, do you have a, vi a vision for just as enterprise spending recovers where that product cycle would be? Well, certainly it is trailing enterprise HDD. Yeah, yeah. I mean, enter enterprise, I, I don't know if I could make a generalization about that because it's just one cycle here, but clearly there was there's more inventory digestion in the hyperscale market on enterprise SSD than there was in capacity enterprise HDDs. As, as we talked about, we... Uh, we see continued growth in capacity enterprise HDDs. We started out this fiscal year uh, projecting uh, sequential growth throughout the fiscal year, and now we're talking about sequential growth throughout the calendar year. So we, we see good demand trends coming back on capacity enterprise HDD, which, again, is a good sign for enterprise SSDs. We'll come back. It's just there's, a little, there's more inventory digestion to get through. Got it. Very helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question comes from Mark Miller with the Benchmark Company. Your line is now live. Uh, your, your cash flow significantly improved during the quarter, but still there was an outflow. When do you expect to be uh, positive from a free cash flow perspective? Yeah, Mark, so uh, turning uh, uh, free cash flow positive is a top priority for us. Uh, we're very much focused on it, and uh, we have a line of sight to achieving it. We expect to achieve uh, free cash flow positive uh, in this second half of the fiscal 24, either this quarter or the next. Uh, as you know, we typically don't guide uh, for, for uh, cash flow. Do you expect to – will you have to draw on your revolver, or do you expect you, to, you won't have to draw, draw on it? Uh, I don't. Uh, I don't see that uh, at this point. Uh. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. The last question comes from Ananda Barua with Loop Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Thanks, guys. Good afternoon. <clears throat> thanks for taking the yeah. question. Sure. Hey, David. Thanks a lot. Um, just wondering if do you have you guys have an early opinion on, uh, you know, if NAND bit rate increases as Gen AI sort of impacts uh, not just edge cycles, but, you know, sort of uh, corporate cycles, Fortune 1000 and hyperscale storage as well, and, and all the other, you know, sort of end market constituencies. Do you, do you have any opinion on, on if uh, there's a, you know, sort of increase the NAND, NAND supply every time? And, and if you do, do you think the increase can be, you know, material and noticeable? Thanks. Yeah, so it, 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 it's, a, it, it's a good point here, which is, like, my comments earlier were about the cycle and what we see in NAND and investing in it. We're big believers in the NAND market, and there's going to be a lot of bit growth in the future. And also, uh, the great thing about the NAND market is you still have the ability to produce new nodes and more efficient in, as far as how much capital you need to put in to get that growth. So, look, the, the overall thesis on NAND continuing to grow uh, – we have a long technology roadmap where we can continue to deliver cost downs. That's still a great story. And we expect, to your point, we expect generative AI to be additive to that, um, uh, you know, especially on the edge. You know, the, the NAND market has really rotated, it, 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 through this downturn, really rotated to an edge-centric edge, uh, market, which, again, our portfolio is very, very well positioned for with our consumer business, with our client SSD business, with our gaming business, with our position with PC OEM. So uh, we're very well positioned there. Um, and, yeah, as, as we see that demand come back and it resets the economics of the industry, uh, we have the ability to go satisfy that demand. And so uh, I think uh, you're very, very bullish about that. That's, that's a useful context. Thanks a lot. Thank you. All right. Thanks, everyone. Uh, we appreciate your time today. We'll see you throughout the quarter. Take care. This concludes our conference. Thank you for attending today's presentation. You may now disconnect.